Hey guys, how's it going? It's Lazy Beast here, and today we're going to do a video talking about how viable it is to play World of Warcraft at Battle for Azov with an Xbox controller or a PS4 controller, if that's what your thing is. So, I find myself spending a lot more time on my laptop playing World of Warcraft with an Xbox controller due to circumstantial things. So, initially I was a bit like, oh, I've got to play with the controller, this sucks, it's not going to be as good, it's going to take me forever to do things like world quests and things like that. But after playing around with it for about two weeks, I've got a lot more confident with it, settled in a lot to it. It's just like anything really, you learn it and uh, tweaked my UI. It does look a mess at the minute, just ignore that. For now, it's functional. Um, and yeah, it's been going pretty well to the point where I've actually been starting to do dungeons. Uh, did a mythic dungeon uh, yesterday and that went really well. I'm probably going to do a separate video showing you how you can perform quite well in dungeons. And obviously raids are coming out next week, so we're going to jump into the raids as well. Probably just on LFR to begin with and test out the water there. So what I'm going to do today is talk about the problems that you can have playing Warcraft with a controller. Some of them are going to be very obvious. And I'm going to talk about some potential fixes for them. And just to give you guys the idea and show you that it is possible if you find yourself not able to play on your computer for whatever reason or you just want to be um, playing downstairs in your living room, playing in your bedroom, wherever you want to play and you've got a laptop or something there, you can do that. You can absolutely play Warcraft and do everything in it with a controller. Let's have a little look at some footage. So the idea for this concept of playing with a controller was introduced to me, probably like many of you, by Bellular in a video and it, he kind of put it across as like being good for leveling you know if you want a more relaxed experience do this for leveling up allied races or any new characters and you'll have a great time but I've pushed it a little bit further than that and gone into the depths of it so you can see here that I'm doing absolutely fine doing this silly little world quest make a logo with the controller you can see I've got my XYB buttons there very self-explanatory the weird thing with playing with the controller is you've got to use your cursor because obviously on a desktop you would just have your mouse there straight away you can just move and click on things but with a controller with the xbox controller you have to click your right analog stick in which brings up your cursor and then you can then move it around with your left analog stick you can right click you can shift right click on everything uh, as you will be able to just using the buttons so for example left button and right analog stick is shift right click you just get these things as you as you go along. Um, console port, the add-on that you use for this, does a pretty decent job of showing you what you can do. And um, it's very intuitive. You just get stuck into it. The more you play, the better you get at it. So like there, you just saw that I mounted up. I've actually got that bound to LB, RB, right trigger. Which you might think, what the hell? That's a lot of faff to press, just, you know, one thing to, to mount up. But actually, it's, it's a simple thing. You can do it in, you know, a fraction of a second once you get used to it, and off you go. So you can see my action bar there. Again, like I said, my UI is a bit of a mess, but it's functional. Um, you can see all the key bindings that I've got. So I'm playing as, as a survival hunter. Um, so you can see all my abilities there. I've got my main ones bound to X, Y, B because they're very easy to press. Right trigger, for example. Right button is one of my trinkets. Uh, and I'd say Survival Hunter is a class, as a spec, has got a decent amount of moves available, like probably the average amount of moves. I'd say a Druid has got a lot more, uh, and say like a Frost Death Knight has got quite a few buttons to press. So I'd say Survival's in their mid-range kind of buttons to press classes specs. So you can see what quite a lot. And <laughs> for initially when I began playing, things like your interrupt, I'm thinking, where the hell is my interrupt? Um, and I didn't know where it was. Later found out it was LBX. So once you remember that, LBX, as soon as you practice interrupting uh, mobs when you're out in the world questing or if you're in dungeons, as soon as you've done it a few times, you've got it. As soon as that cast bar pops up, LBX, you know what to press. And obviously it depends on what you bind it to. What I did when I transferred to the console is left all my bindings on the action bar as they were on PC and then just learned them as they were on here. I didn't move anything around because one of the big problems really it can be a problem if you let it be um is when you start to use a controller if you then move around your abilities on your action bars to fit the controller better once you've gone back onto the pc the action bars have moved on your abilities no, sorry the abilities have moved on the action bars there as well so you have to then put them back where they were which can be a real faff so that's problem number one really but obviously you can solve that just by learning the abilities where they pop up on your bar right there so here we can see some combat, and you can see I'm just getting stuck in, there's no kind of faffing around, no messing, positioning is quite important as a survival hunter, so 
you're very easily able to move around, position yourself as you need to be. It feels pretty good actually, it feels pretty great moving around with a controller. So for max level player doing things like world quest, you can see me here uh, picking out which world quest I'm going to do. Unfortunately, you can't actually see the cursor on the screen uh, with the recording, which is a shame because you you know you can't see that moving around. Um, but it's quite easy to do. So doing things like world quest, it does take a bit of getting used to. Um, but I'm using the add-on world quest tracker. Now that as you can see on the left underneath my main quests, it puts when you're not in a, a town, it puts a little uh, arrow to guide you where the quest is. So that's really easy to follow. You don't need to keep checking the map. But if you do want to check the map, all you do is press start on your controller and then go over to map and press A and it'll bring it up straight away. So you can keep that highlighted. So it's just start and A whenever you want to check the map as opposed to pressing M. So it's very, very easy to do. And obviously leveling up, uh, leveling up new characters is, is perfect. It's probably the best thing to do for us to get used to this. Um, of course, you can you can level on a, sorry, you can hop into a level max character and do some world quests. It's quite an easy chilled activity to do to get used to it which is pretty decent if we move on to talk about like dungeons doing dungeons on this so it's just going to depend on what spec you play really as to how easy or difficult a time you have playing it playing a survival hunt is pretty good because like i said before it's kind of mid-range amount of buttons to press compared to some classes and it's quite a decent spec your movement is quite important within the spec um, but if you were going to play something like a druid i mean my other main is a druid now I have issues with that because of all the different forms, all the different action bars, learning them again. Um, on my actual PC, when I play on a druid, I have the F keys, F1 to F5 bound for my forms, which makes it really simple. F for form, F, you know, it's just, it makes sense. But there's no easy way of doing that on a controller unless you only wanted to use, say, cat form, for example, if you was a feral um, and travel form. Um, playing classes that are quite dotty, so like, um, if you had like a Shadow Priest or obviously an, an Affliction Warlock, you're going to be doing a hell of a lot of uh, target swapping, which, you know, keeping your dots up, which can be a bit of a drag uh, when you don't, you know, you can't very easily tag target. But again, the more you do it, the easier you get used to it. You can see here, I'm trying to keep my dot up Serpent Sting. So there is a fair bit of target swapping, which is pretty easy. So the way that you target things on the controller is LBRB, and you can kind of just move it and aim, and then when you release whatever target you've got hovered over, you then select. So it's pretty, again, pretty intuitive, pretty decent to use. Um, so yeah, combat's pretty decent. The only, the hardest thing probably to do with a controller is heal. Tanking should be pretty easy, especially this guy here with the bear. You could probably you could probably do that pretty easy with the controller. Um, again, obviously you've got the the target swapping thing going on, but again, once you get used to it, you're fine. Uh, but healing could be dicky, could be dicky. Pardon me, could be tricky. So um, I do know a guy uh, that commented on one of my videos a while back that said he had healed some current raids uh, back in Legion, and he had absolutely no problems at all. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, it definitely is doable. It depends how much you want to uh, to practice. Another area where you could run into problems is for your interrupt so like i was saying again earlier if you don't know where your interrupt is you're going to have issues uh, if you want to do anything like dungeons or even pvp you need to know where that is and targeting quickly an enemy so if you're fighting a pack of five mobs and one enemy starts casting that you need to interrupt and you haven't already got that enemy selected it can be a bit of a panic to get it selected in time to interrupt the ability so this can obviously be done through practice if you know which ones you're going to need to interrupt then obviously you're going to select them before they start to cast so you, you're well in there with the interrupt uh, the other thing is if you're a class that has say things like targeted aoe like on the ground so like as a hunter i've got my traps which after a little reticle pops up when i press the ability now you can absolutely do this um, but the only thing is it's very difficult to move well you actually can't move um, because it takes up your movement control um, to cast you know the spell when the reticle pops up that's you stood still until you've cast that spell or cancelled it so i'll say things like uh death knights with um what's it called blood and the thing the bloody thing on the floor the bloody circle that does a lot of damage <laughs> i forgot its name now which is inconvenient but if you're casting that all the time you, you know it might be a bit of a drag to do so um unless you get used to it again uh but another option you've got there is you could make a macro for it that casts it to your feet those do exist so that is, you know, that's a possible workaround for it. There, there are workarounds for any problems that you come across with the controller. There's a workaround for it, 
and there's no need to really worry it just takes a bit of creative thinking sometimes all right so here i'm going to talk about some different issues so this world quest by the way is sick i really enjoy this world quest and um all you got to do is slide down the hill and dodge the ice. So I had some problems here. This was the first time I did it and I knew it was going to be a pain in the ass to get used to. So here, you can see there, I didn't um, get rid of my reticle, which meant that I couldn't turn my character. I didn't get rid of my cursor, rather. So I couldn't turn. So I just ran straight into that block of ice and got caught by the Yeti, which sucks. So what you've got to do when you've got your cursor up, when you press right button in, right, right trigger in, you need to bring it back to the center of the screen for it to disappear like I just did there. So now I've done that. I don't know what the hell happened there. Um, but again, it sucks. Uh, my camera just completely messed up because again, I probably hadn't selected, you know, the the, <laughs> the camera movement thing. Um, so it was a real problem. But then I got it. You know, I figured it out. It balls up at the start a little bit. But once you get used to it, this just proves it. You can do things that you would think were very tricky. So there you go. I've got the knack for it now, and I end up being able to do this quest. So you just you just got to get yourself in there and try. Like you, you can definitely do anything that you can do on a on a desktop with a controller if you put the practice in um and you can see they're like zooming in um to my character then i did that i just leant forward and, and scrolled on the the laptop mouse pad because i'm not sure how you do that on a controller but again i could learn so there we go that guys that's pretty much it for this video i just wanted to show you um, what I've been up to with the controller and obviously not done a video for a while so just wanted to update you what I was doing and trying this out a lot um, and that kind of hopefully proves to you that it's possible absolutely possible to play with an Xbox controller now this dungeon I was in here I think it was a, a normal or a, a heroic I haven't got the DPS meters on because obviously I wanted the UI to be as less cluttered as possible um, but what I did after this was I did get the DPS meters on I went into a dungeon just to see how I was, how I was performing because I I didn't think I was performing too bad, so I wanted to kind of check for sure. So I went into a Mythic Dungeon and did pretty decently, and I'll show you the results of that in another video over the next few days or the next week. And guys, yeah, if you want to try this out, I definitely highly recommend giving it a go, especially if you, for whatever reason, can't um, play on your um, computer as much as you'd like to and you've got a laptop knocking around spare. Or if, for example, you've got, a, say, a back injury or something and you can't, be leaning over a keyboard you want to sit back in a comfortable chair and play with your desktop that's also doable so very accessible guys and i hope you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching i've been laser beast and i'll catch you next time